Okay, so fifth time for charm. Okay, that was really good. I got through that first part, which is fine. I can go back. I've got the two measures. Uh, rest there at measures 29 and 30 that I can work with. So what I will do now is, so I can keep that first part, is I will split the split uh, that part up and uh, so I have the second half and the first half separated and delete the second half so I can go back and record that proper. Um, next thing I would do, next thing I'll do, um, go under tools and go under SoundForge, which is the editing program that I use. And I uh, use that for a lot of the post-production work and what have you as far as uh, adding reverb and um, everything, doing noise reduction. And uh, what I'm going to do now is noise reduce, and is reduce the noise because this uh, this keyboard does emit some uh, noise, a bit of noise. It's not as much as it used to, but um, still enough to be a bit distracting. So I'm um, just going to go under FX sound reduction. I've got the I've got the preset one that I made already up. Hit OK, and we're done with that. Go back, save it. Now we're going to start at measure thirty one, which is uh, where this next uh, little part is going to go. And I should be able to get into the 60s, which is uh, the big next big section with the cello until near the end. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. So basically, process continues over. This is why it's sort of tedious and I don't really enjoy it as much because I much rather enjoy the creation of the music instead. <laughs> than the recording. So like this is just mere execution at this point. So Alright, so that went well. Um it's a bit tricky there because it's six eight time but I had the uh had the notes changing every third beat instead of every uh other every fourth beat. So um but that was intended, so... Um, there are some times where I enjoy the recording process, especially when I'm working on electronic music, because it's... You don't really... there. It, that's the first time you'll really get an idea as to what the sound will be like when all the elements are together. I mean, this, this is always good, too, to get an idea with classical music, but at the same time, I mean, I already, when I'm composing, I already have a general idea as to what it's going to sound like in my head because of the fact that these are instruments that I've heard several times over the years. So, I mean, it's a little more tedious when I'm working on something like this than when I'm working on electronic music, but, um, it's still, you know, it's still, it can be a fun process. I mean, you know, I, I enjoy it for what it is. So, um, next I am going to go to measure 
100, um, which is the next place that the cello's at. So, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and uh, first I'll probably do the tremolo just because of the fact that that will be easier since I'm already over here. Um, let's see what type of sound do I want to use? sound better actually. So that starts around 109. So that's tremolo to the end of this. That was pretty good. Um, probably do it once more just to be on the safe side. I think there were a couple that I actually... Uh, okay, so that went well. Um, I might want to go ahead and... Actually, what I might do is because of the fact that the uh, violin, the two violin parts also go into tremolo at that point, I'll probably go ahead and do those parts too while I'm at this point in the film. So, all the uh, tremolo is done now. Go back and add those three uh, measures of pizzicato at 22. Okay. The way I'm going to do this is... Go over here, I'm going to do chord options. I want to do sound on sound. And it's going to be so basically I won't lose anything from the earlier track. It will just sort of bleed in with this track. So this will just bleed into that track. So just have three measures to do, so I'll go ahead and do it. Okay, so um, that should do it for that.